Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dyslexia Life Act Show. I'm your host, Matthew Head. And in this episode, I'm talking about the Dyslexia Show 2023 with its founder, Aaron Smith. This is a live event to spread awareness for dyslexia. It happens on the 24th to 25th of March 2023 in the NEC at Birmingham. It's got stands as well as a great list of speakers split into education, parents, workplace, and individual. There's a keynote theatre and an innovation theatre where I'll be hosting as well as speaking at the event. This is Aaron's return onto this podcast. And if you want to hear his backstory as well as setting up the Dyslexia Show, head over to episode 17. I'll link that in the show notes, along with links to the Dyslexia Show, which you can find at dyslexialifehacks.com forward slash podcast. Welcome back on the show, Aaron. Thank you very much, Matt. Or Matthew. Which one do you prefer, actually? (laughs) You asked me this before. I Uh, I did. I couldn't remember. (laughs) The, pro- the problem is, I don't mind. You don't mind. The problem is, it's written there. The the, the benefit of using the platform we're using, because we'll be we'll be like the BBC and not say it, say the platform name, but yeah. it says your name at the bottom of it, and that's it what doesn't. I'm reading. Well, I'm decoding <laughs> as we try to do that. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Well, um, I always introduce myself as Matthew, but most people default back to Matt at some point. So you'll find that Matt Head appears quite a lot. Yeah. Um, it's becoming odd referring to myself as Matt on social media after a while. <laughs> But yes, you actually improved your uh, name from last time because you had your Twitter handle as there before, and that was getting me completely messed oh, up. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. At, 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 just just put it out there at Aaron Dyslexia. Just yeah, 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 head over there. Yeah. <laughs> and Aaron is spelled A double R A N as well, as of course, because everyone spells it the lazy way with A A R O N. Anyone that's called that, I do apologise, but but it is the first <laughs> name of the baby book. It is the lazy name. <laughs> right. Go make sure we get your Aaron's correct then. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I thought we we kick off really with the show is um, not just discussing how we pronounce these names, but <laughs> sort of uh, last year's show. Now, how did it go? Really, was it what you expected? Because it had quite a tricky. Oh, a tri- tricky. Being. Tricky. Should we should we give a little backstory to that? Yeah. Quick great synopsis. Yeah. Quick synopsis. So so dyslexia show. Came up with the idea oh, in the early early two thousands. Had an idea, had a plan, didn't work. Um, then 26, 2019, uh, was sitting in a pub in North Wales with a load of speakers that actually came to the show, uh, and also our very first sponsor, which is Dyslexia mm-hmm. Box, which is also the sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> That's thing. So uh, Dyslexia Box uh, were with, with me, and they went. We want to help you do this show. I went okay, and I was like, "Let's let's have a level up." Uh, so, Dyslexia Show was founded in 2019 to run in 2020, the weekend of lockdown one. So, <laughs> it never happened. It was postponed two weeks before the event, um, and and it was very hard, very hard for someone with 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 neurodiversity to actually process this thing that you've been working on on and off for so many weeks, so many months building up to and we had like like nearly nearly three three thousand people registered to attend and that was like it was actually the feedback prior to that was unbelievable the nec where we where we have the show were ecstatic the speakers were ecstatic the exhibitors were ecstatic and it kind of then went to this pandemic we then had a a bit a bit of a virtual event and then we then delivered the event last year at at, at the nec so at last march um, and I think it's it's a bit of a whirlwind. I, I remember the things I remember were driving in uh, when we when we took over tenancy of the hall. So so when you when you take on a building like the NEC, you get they call it a tenancy. So you yeah. kind of like you 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 kind of you're renting that space for that time. So yeah. we were driving. Now we were lucky enough. Uh, um, we got in a little bit earlier, so I could watch the lorries. So my all my stand build, my stand building company that we use, they yeah. uh, they we watched their four lorries, their five lorries. We drove behind them as they drove into the hall, and it's like literally we had this like, this little video, this this convoy video <laughs> of these lorries turning up, which was just brilliant. It was, um, and we got into got into the hall, and basically you are in this room, and all that was in there was the catering unit had been built. Mm. So where they were going to put the food, mm. right? And cables, were, yeah, and <laughs> cables were pulled up from the floor. Black floor, empty hall, four and a half thousand square feet of space. Now we weren't taking, weren't filling all that, and it was empty. No. And basically, then, literally, then 
people were just dropping stuff. People were dropping stuff in there. I, I'd taken my car. I was lucky enough because I took my car all the way down uh, to the to the where the where the orgs office was. So I could unload all my equipment and put it into my office. And um, and I remember that really quite nicely. And I was like, there in me still toe couch with me pink high vis that says <laughs> dyslexia show on the back. I loved it. I did. <laughs> and like there we were, me and the, the AV guy who's ironically phoning me while we're on this podcast. But hey, I've told him I, I, I'll, I'll recall him back afterwards. <laughs> uh, we were we were dealing with uh, um, dealing with checking out all the network cables, and we were ready to go. And like literally went back, had a nice meal, and then literally then got um, basically got uh, got up at quarter to five a quarter past five the following morning so this was the thursday morning and at five to six the door opened at the back of the hall and i walked in and so did all the stand builders and literally within about three hours the hall went from a black hall to a very pink hall yes <laughs> it did um and these stands started to be built and I think then, I think then people started to arrive. So that my team started to arrive, um, and I rem- the thing I remember about that day was is walking outside into the main uh, into the main walkway. So it's in Hall Eight at the NEC, mm-hmm. and watching the sign go up, uh, yeah. and that's when yeah. I was then in happy tears. <laughs> it was that was the thing was like, okay, we've made it, Jimmy. I'm running the dyslexia show. Um, and still now, there's some people that have done videos of, of it, and I'm still now going, well, that was the show I created. <laughs> yeah. And like we had, we had 2,500 delegates over the two days. We had yeah. uh, oh, wow. 60, spons- six, sorry, 60 speakers over the two days, mm. right? 19 sponsors, 48 exhibitors, right? yeah. and seven, uh, and one semi-full-time member of staff, and six, uh, um, six uh, consultants and contractors that came and helped me, plus an amazing array of con- of contractors to run it from, and like people like Europa, who's our stand builder, mm. um, uh, Tamron Event Services, who's our who's our sales and and, and operations. So Tammy and Andy are amazing. They they're doing this year's show with me. Um, you've then got a, um, a Digital Age Event who did all the AV. Um, th- these are like you can't run an event without people, uh, and then we, yeah. we use on our on our on our scan our our um, reg company that we used last year as well and that's thing and and you learned so much it was yeah. that thing uh, and that's thing and, and i remember there I, I got to cut the ribbon with <laughs> uh, uh with, with with uh with matt hancock which yes. was quite good that was yeah. quite it was quite an experience i like everyone that I, I i have no issue with matt i get on with him quite well and <laughs> it's for me it was like people were like what why have you asked him to come i have to ask him to come he wanted to come. He's got a he's got a very positive attitude around dyslexia. I'm going to support that positive attitude because it's good. It's good publicity for all of us. It's like spread more awareness about dyslexia because that is what the show is. It's the the UK's national exhibition dedicated to dyslexia and neurodiversity, and yes. let's spread awareness about dyslexia. And that's what it's all about. Yes. One thing I am curious. This will be the geeky engineer mind. With everything laid out in that hall, is that the first time you'd seen? what the show would look like outside of a virtual system. Is there like a place where they knock up a small stand that you can no. go, oh yeah, I like no. looking at that. So, so, so I've been, so <laughs> the reason why I run an event is because I've been going to exhibitions since I was 17. Okay. So, so a career of it. <laughs> so basically, so I, uh, when I was, uh, when I was 17, I, I was a volunteer for the British Dyslexia Association yes. yeah. and I went to um education show on the Saturday at, at, at the NEC, and I think then they had a pink carpet as well. So, and so I saw what a show was like, and I really enjoyed the atmosphere. I really enjoyed the concept behind it, and I was nosy. I wanted to know, okay, well, what's at that door? What? Why are you standing there? Why do you wear? Why do you wear a red jacket? And why does he wear a black jacket? And because uh, you both got the same walkie-talkie, are you <laughs> different security? And that's it. And this is the thing. Yeah. It's like I was interesting. So. I went to, I've been to so many shows around education. So education show, BET, Special Needs London. Mm-hmm. Uh, the I went to um, Education Innovation, Autism Show. I've been to lots of events. and I've been Nathan Live and stuff like that. So these are kind of big events that I've been involved in. And I've been in either as a, a trustee of the BDA when I was a trustee first time or a member of staff when I was at, at, the, uh, at, as a, at the BDA. Mm. And, and that actually kind of where 
some of this started because actually my stand builder, so Europa International, they built the stands for the British Dyslexia International Conference. Yeah, so okay. that's how I know. So that's how I knew um, Steve Murphy, who's my, who's who's the managing director of of it, and that's how we got involved. He did, and that's why I was like, well, if I'm going to build any show, I'm going to ask him to do it because. He's going to do everything from power, electrics, furniture, carpet. He's going to do the whole lot. So might as well mm. get someone that you trust to do it. And so, yeah, so I, you, you don't see what it looks like. I could vision it because of my dyslexia. I could see it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I, 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 it kind of did look a bit different because the one thing you forget is like, I don't know if you remember, when you walked into the main hall, main part, actually, the first bit is actually quite low. The ceiling yeah. is quite low. And then you walk in and it's massively high. Yes, and, yeah. and 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 that was the bit that I kind of that put me off. It was like that was the hardest bit, but no, I, I kind of it, it was. It, I kind of knew what it was going to look like because I, I know what shell scheme looks like. I know how it all works. So for me, I knew what it was going to look like. I don't know how anyone else thought about it. Um, <laughs> there were things that were different, things that looked a bit like okay, that's fine. And and there was so many things you learned, yeah. so many things you learned, and that's why yeah. we're going into year two now. We should be going into year five, uh, year four. Yes. Uh, and we're going into year two. And it's like, well, okay. But year two, today, we're recording it six weeks out. We're recording mm-hmm. this podcast six weeks out from the show. And I, I'm I'm excited. I, I like, like six weeks out from last year's show, I was nervous. I was getting quite stressed. <laughs> and, uh, where I'm kind of, I'm not too stressed. I, I'm, and I think the thing what it is, is, is you have to have confidence in who you have around you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing is, is like, like I cannot do everything myself, and that's the problem. Was when I was, when I was last year, I was doing everything myself. Mm. Yes, and where this time I, I've got the right people in to do things to help actually deliver an event for the dyslexia community. When I mean, we think about the six point nine million people in the UK with dyslexia, so yeah, we've got a lot of people we can service and support, and that's the whole point of the show. Yes, yes. So, in your opinion, from last year's show, before we get into 2023, a couple of things. Um, what do you believe sort of went well with last year's show? And it was seemed like a roaring success having got, gone to it and spoken at it and spent the whole two days at it. I, I think the thing what was the success was the comments. Mm, so, okay. the positive comments from exhibitors and delegates. The, mm. the comments we got were things like, it, the, so you get the first the negative comment, which is not a lot from an, from an exhibitor, not a lot of people, which is which is always the hardest thing for a first event. So yeah, delegate pe- exhibitors want lots of people because then they're busy, so more people can buy something because that's the whole point of, of going to a trade show or, or or an exhibition. Yes, yes. So, but the one thing they said was is even though we didn't have a lot of people, we had the right people. Mm. So that's a, that. Right. So that's a positive. So that to me is a big positive because that to me shows that what we were doing pre-show, the marketing, the communication, the awareness, we were getting the right people there to rate the right decision for the right reason. Mm. Uh, I think the second thing was is seeing people there. I think having having people turn up, people congratulate me, people happy. I think the thing that actually that I didn't realize because I didn't know this because um, I was actually in the office, I closed the show on the Tannoy system. Yes. And, <laughs> and um, like the first night, I got it wrong. But the second night, I got it right. And uh, Steve Murphy, the, the stand builder, he came in and said, it's the first time I've been to a show that I've heard people cheer at the end of an event and, and, and applaud <laughs> how well you've done. Mm. So that's that's the thing. And this is the thing, that the community that we live in, the community that we work in, if we get it right, and that's the thing that I, I I'm not to be big headed. I understand. I try and understand everyone that comes to the show. If I don't understand them, I, how do I best service them as a, as an event director? How do I ensure that okay, I know this product would work really well. Okay, if we put you there and we kind of say, well, actually, why don't you do this because that will work with that audience better, and that's a bigger audience for you because your product is that kind of price or that kind of service, and it's like, well, let's support you, and that's the whole thing. You see, that is that is what we want to do. And that's where we are. And that's kind of like, that's for me, it's like, it's a very beneficial concept. So, so yeah, so that, things like that went well. Um, like, I think, like, having all the speakers there, like, mm. the, like I think the thing, like, you would have saw the hospitality we had for speakers. <laughs> yeah. 
right? Now we like like I'm a big fan like like of making sure that if we're not gonna we're not paying people to be there, we we ensuring but we're feeding them and making sure they're happy <laughs> and that thing. And that's what we did. And that's the whole point. It's like we want to be able to people don't realise this. It's like when well, I've had one like one negative on this year is someone wanted to to speak. Uh, um, and I actually had it last year as well. Actually, someone wanted to speak and they wanted to charge me a lot of money to speak. And I went, I don't pay speakers. Oh. And they said, but that's my business. I went, that that that's fine. Okay. Do you want to go and charge people? You charge people. But a parent of a dyslexic child, right, that needs support shouldn't pay more than £10 or £12 mm. pound to listen to a speaker. And that's the whole point of it is that we want to kind of give that concept there that we have to kind of cover our costs. It's yeah. not about, it's not, we're not a huge, massive conglomerate. We're not about making every profit out of anyone. We're about <laughs> making sure that we can run an event. Yeah. We can survive that event and we can actually give the content to the people. And that's what, and that's the thing. And that's, I think that's the thing that we had is that the speakers got what they wanted. We got them speakers. You all had an amazing time. We all got you. You had some really good, really good feedback. I think mm. that was really good. Um, I think that we, I think interviewing the charities that I did, I, I thought that was went, went really well. Uh, yeah. I was, I, I kind of didn't, I, I missed, a, I kind of went and kind of went, oh, I had 30 minutes and actually had 45 because I missed misread my own timetable but hey ho <laughs> that, that was my fault um i think yeah i think i think the, I think the, thing, the thing that got that really annoyed me was that my my walkie talkies my radio didn't work that i bought uh, uh, uh no. so, they, so, so they've been donated to the local uh to the local archaeology team because they can use them <laughs> okay. when they because i don't need them anymore well, right, well they've okay. got a lot they have a long tunnel here in leicester which they they go they walk uh, it's the long uh, longest longest single track tunnel that used to have a train line in in europe or something or it was victorian train track it's called glenfield tunnel and they oh, walk, yeah. that you can walk down it you can do and they have to have a radio for health and safety oh. and i was like well they'll work better for you because there's no one there's no interference so um yeah. uh, so that was probably that was my only thing that i didn't have my 27 walkie talkies and my 15 clipboards do, do, have they got them donated with dyslexia show stickers? All no, I didn't know. I thought I didn't think about that. So I proper branded up. No, no. I, I, I know that no one can see me, but I am wearing a branded T-shirt that does say uh, dyslexia show. And your name on it. And it's, it's got my name on it, yeah. And also it's got my Twitter handle on as well on the back. So, cause, uh, <laughs> so unfortunately, I like Twitter. I like, and I was very worried last year if it wasn't going to be around, but it is still around, so it's good. So. <laughs> Yes. One of the things I really enjoyed about it, uh, having really taken a big step into the dyslexia world around 2020, 2021, was it felt like lots of people, as I've discovered during my journey with it, that it's all quite close knit and everybody kind of is only sort of one degree of separation from somebody else. And it's it really it's felt, a very much a community. It you is could, very much so. And, and that's the thing why, like, my my the, the the people I employed to help with marketing use the word join the community. That's the whole point of it. Is the show is all about a community, and that's that kind of it sits really nicely with my feelings. Like I'm because it is a community, and and the thing what it is is that I remember as a as a as a young as a as a as a as a young lad when I found out I was dyslexic, I felt I was alone. I didn't mm. realize there was all these people, and and, and yeah, like. Matt, you, you mean the same thing, and this is yeah. the point. You see that that actually, if we can go and say, it, it, if a parent can bring a young person to an event, it's a national event at a national exhibition centre, and go, you know that founder over there, he's dyslexic. That speaker mm. over there is dyslexic, and look at what they're doing. Yes, and and this is the thing you see. It's like like our we've got our four kind of pillars of meet, be inspired, understand, and connect, mm -hmm. and, and that kind of. It actually, uh, it's quite funny. I, I wrote percentage of this website and then the, I got two two marketing people went away and just did it. And being dyslexic, <laughs> I didn't read it back. I just went, <laughs> is it spelt right? They went, yes. I went, that's fine. I'm just going to leave it. And I was going through the other day looking for something. I went, oh, I didn't realize I'd done that. I'm going to use that. I like that. <laughs> it's my show. But that's the thing. So that's the thing. But no, it is. It, yeah, it it is a community and it is that thing. So I yeah. think you are right so much that that was the thing. I think that we, like, yeah, it was. That's the whole point of it. It was. Yeah, it it, it was really interesting and really good fun. Just bumping a bit, particularly by that point, I'd interviewed a significant amount of some of the speakers on this podcast. It's like, hey, this is what you look like in real life, um, and the comment was, you look taller than 
in real life yeah. you do on a Zoom screen. Well, you do. You are tall, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Actually, I remember that. You are quite tall. That's the thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yeah. I remember uh, Stuart from Claro grabbing me. He's like, you're a lot taller than I mentioned. And obviously, Darren Clark had lots of fun with that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Well, it's not, not Stuart from Claro anymore, remember? It's Stuart from Text Help now. Oh, of course, it's Text Help now, isn't it? Yes. Text Help now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right, yes. yeah. yeah got to get that right. Got to get right, so, yes. So, and obviously, it, there would have been some bits that didn't go so well. So what did you think from last year's show that didn't go so well and things you're kind of I looking think, to I think, I think the, 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 the hardest thing for us was was how uh, so the hardest thing was the, the was the crossover of the two years so the hardest mm. thing was is that we had we had a figure of people that have registered for 2020 for 2020 and that oh, figure yes. moved that figure moved with us yeah. so that figure was quite was was quite was a decent number yeah. and then we kind of then added a lot more to it mm. so our figure in front of us was actually nearly 6000 people registered Wow. So we know there was only two and a half thousand people attend. Now we know, we know, in the in the whole of the events industry, you get a you get a potential drop off because it's a free mm. event. We know mm. that it's always going to happen, but not that much, and definitely not that much in the dyslexia world. But you have to then put into conversation. We just come out of COVID. We'd removed a lot of restrictions. There was still an unease. Mm, so yes. I think yeah. that was a big learning curve for us. So we we also so I made a very hard decision uh, at the beginning of this year, and I changed my registration company. Now I'm a very loyal person. Mm-hmm. Now there's things behind that that I'm not going to talk about because it's not fair. But okay. we moved to another part. We moved to another provider, and actually a provider that is very new in the space, as in the sense that they built it from scratch for okay. our show. So the oh, wow. registration system was built by NetReady. NetReady aren't they're an IT development company, uh, but the one lucky thing is that their managing director uh, was with me all for the whole show, uh, mainly because we are both in scouting, and <laughs> and I had to run around a field, build a kitchen for him. So I went, well, you're coming to run around a show and follow me around and mend stuff when I need to mend stuff <laughs> and that's what he did oh and also by the way Fair you're trade. selling you're selling exhibition space uh, se- sorry selling uh, seminars for me as well <laughs> and he then learned very quickly that it was actually the way it was built before wasn't very good so he kind of had built a new platform within by the end of day one anyway so that's what we learned we learned that these things you have to look at things and go okay is this going to work and, and that thing is like I'm I am I'm very loyal and I'm very kind of what there's a word for it that I'm very particular about what I use and what I do. I'm very like if I believe in something, I will tell you I believe in it. If I don't believe in it, I don't very talk about it unless someone has really upset me or really annoyed me. And yeah. that's thing. So that's what you learn. So yeah, things like that. And I think, yeah, it's an it's a it's a new business. It's yeah. gonna have financial issues. It's gonna have financial difficulties. We're we're gonna get through them. It was an it it was touch and go. We got there. Uh and we are now into into the new into the new 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 year. We're doing okay. We're gonna. We are already planning twenty twenty four. We're already planning twenty twenty five. Okay. Um, <laughs> because um, the end. If you work in events, like like like, we know that we we were just talking off the podcast about how much within your outside of this podcast you work and how far ahead are you working. Mm. It's the same concept with events. Fourteen months is not out of the realms. Yeah. Um, so we are already negotiating for 2024 dates. So we know the dates. I'm not going to say them because I'm not allowed to yet because I'm signed yeah. a contract. But <laughs> uh, uh, but I, but I have got the dates in my diary. I know when they are. Um, and it's very it's very hard that things like that are actually the uh, people don't realise actually that's the thing because you've got to go okay go the same weekend. Well, actually next year the same weekend is the week that all school, everyone breaks up for school because Easter's the end of the year, end of the uh, 31st of March. Ah, oh, okay. So, yeah. So you've got to think about that because we're in an audience. We've got to kind of support that audience because we are not a we're not just an education event. We're not just a parent event. We're not just a workplace event. We are mm. or an individual event. We are all of them. And these are the things you've got to think about. It's like it's not putting an event on is not an easy process. No, no. But it but in one sense it can be really good fun. It's like like when you have conversations like this about the show and you kind of look at it from hindsight and you go, well actually mm-hmm. no, that's pretty good. And that's the thing. I think that's the thing. We are 
we're moving in that right direction and we're growing and we're kind of going, you know what, actually, let's have some fun and let's support people. And, and that's the thing. And, we, and like that's thing, there's so many things going on at the show yeah. this year. Yeah, there is. Yes. Yeah. It does. Having looked at the website and obviously being close to it, um, it's surprising me how much more it added. So 2000 and uh, the last year's show, 2020, 20, 20, 20, that's, what, 20, that's 20, what I'm trying yeah. to say. So last yeah. year's show, 2022, gets packed up in a lorry, yeah. driven away. Now, between then and now, obviously you are working ahead of yourself because you have to for next year's show. Yeah. But but you must have sat in a washout meeting within a few days. Oh, you, well, within a, with probably within a few months, actually, because basically what, what like, like the thing, the downside is, and it's not a downside, no, that's not the right word. I'm a, dyslexic entrepreneur i own a number mm-hmm. of other companies on yes. top of the show right yes. because for me the show is a passion the show needs to survive it needs to grow and it needs to go three years it's a new business in one sense and yes it doesn't actually pay me anything in one sense okay. i because I, really truthfully but because we want it to work and that's all it that's all it's about so of course you've got contractors and they all theoretically their contract finishes. So until their contract mm. restarts again, they don't actually start doing that. Now, of course, they will do little bits and they'll kind of go, well, we need to do this, Aaron, and and that's the thing. So that's what happens. So yeah, we had them wash up, we had them conversations. Um, and we had and and the sad thing was that one of our members of staff had to leave because of personal reasons. So yeah. so because she left, that kind of changed the dynamic, and that meant that then I had to really think. And and, and the other side of it is, is that that with life is life, and we have to kind of go where we need to go. So we got, we weren't, we were ready. We weren't a hundred percent ready for this year at the time I wanted to be. But when we got going, we got going very quickly, and we got things done. And actually, we got to the point where we are today, where we are in a very good position. I, I like, like I said, six weeks out, I was very stressed. I'm, <laughs> I'm six weeks out. I'm, I'm quietly confident. I'm quite happy. I want to be more. I want to do more. There's so much more we could do within the next six weeks. So, uh, right. and even if you're, even if when I know Matt, you're going to try and get this podcast out as quick as possible. So, when yeah. you're listening to this, do check out the website if you're if you haven't registered, <laughs> register, right? Because there's still going to be stuff there. And if you, even if you're an exhibitor, don't, don't don't just ask the question. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Right. Because they could that we we are like as of today we are 95 percent full on exhibition space. Yeah. So, now so that and that to me next... that that helps me there. We are we are ninety five percent full on exhibition space. So by the time that's we get really good. yeah, that, and that's where I want to be. We, we have and be honest, we have made the show. We made the show very big, but we haven't shrunk it down a little bit uh, to make that work, and that's fine by me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's thing, but it's it's all these things you have to do behind the scenes. So yeah, yeah you had a wash up meeting, we had them conversations, and we kind of started doing so. Even the day after that, that like uh, the one thing that didn't work last year you asked me what didn't work last year and that was the concept of workplace mm. so mm. workplace for me is an area that that dyslexia box is very much in, involved in and that's why they're the sponsors for this year's show now and to me workplace is a logical thing to do it's a logical thing to have an additional thing on on, on there uh, and that's what we did we had education parents workplace uh, um, and we've added individual from feedback as well but we made workplace this year a one day event. So workplace is the Friday. Yes. And it is a one one day event and it is a paid for event. So you have to pay for it to get in, but you get everything. So you basically get your three, your five sessions mm. included. So you don't pay any extra where education, parents, and individual, you're free to register. You can go and look at the exhibition space. If you want to go to a seminar, you pay for it. Workplace, we we charge you charge you that premium because actually we want to give you that support. We want to kind of get you in there, and actually, it's it's more of an event for you to be there. So, and that's the thing, mm-hmm. and we we're going to add benefits to that over time. This is it's a very thing. So I actually at five o'clock, no, I think it was half eight the following morning. I was writing that on my phone. Mm-hmm. And I also wrote individual as well because that was the feedback we got. We'd already had that feedback on social media. We'd already had that feedback that actually we weren't doing enough for that individual dyslexic. And that's what we've done this year. And that's, I think, uh, like we can we can talk about this because by the time the podcast goes out, it will be out. And you're, because you, Matt, are going to be the the compare of the innovation theatre. 
I hope you know this. I hope you know this. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm aware. <laughs> That's good. So the, again, the innovation theatre was something that, that was very new to me. What what it was is I I felt that we had I I didn't want to have. I wanted to have different things. So you have your your CPD, your continuing professional development mm. for education, for parents, for individuals, uh, and for workplace that are paid for. That you you pay that you get your certificate once you once you uh, a couple of weeks afterwards, uh, well a couple of months afterwards to be honest, because of the way <laughs> things work. Uh, not me, that's external concepts. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and the thing what it is is that we we want to give you high quality speakers and and that money allows us to pay for their food to pay for their hotel pay for their travel and that's why education is 20 pound parents is 10 pound individuals 20 pound plus that but if you buy four you get a discount so that's the oh, kind okay. of concept so you buy four yeah. things and that's why we did you know what let's do workplace one price you get your five sessions but you can then swap it for another session so if you want to go to a, work, a parent one, you can do. If you want to go to a, a, a an education, you can do if you're in workplace. But you've got that dedicated area. But then we then have the innovation theatre, which you can also swap out and go to. But anyone can stand around it. Anyone can watch it. Anyone can look at it. And it's and it's right next to the workplace theatre. It's behind Dyslexia Box. And it's kind of that, what we call a feature for the show with inspiring content. And, and mm. I think, Matt, you're speaking on the second day, aren't you? I am indeed, uh, yes. And, uh, and we've got people, we've got, uh, we, we know we've got people talking about access to work. We've know we've got, um, we've got Natalie, uh, you've got Armel, who you spoke to <laughs> yeah. in, in, a, in a podcast. Uh, she's coming. And it's like, for me, it's like it's an amazing array of speakers uh, that are up and coming, that mm-hmm. are, are inspiring and, it, and, and they're innovating in the dyslexia space and that's how i look at it and that's why we created it and that's saying and it's the same with our other with our other two um on the floor features mm. with like and that's so we've got we've got the classroom which is very new for this year it's something that i've wanted to do for a long time and i kind of had this plan this is the idea was the room is set up like a classroom oh, and you have so you so basically it's all it's an old fashioned concept it has a gray carpet <laughs> And if you think of a chair, you think of that chair where the, where your uh, where the table used to come down on yeah. the chair. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's how it's set up, <laughs> and basically it's set up in rows. So it's set up oh, like God. an old fashioned classroom. And, and the thing what it is, is the idea PTSD is that a, from that, I think. And, uh, yeah. Well, it might do, but the point is, it, but with the pink carpet round, it should be fine. All right, uh, Mike is is is. As Matt Gower, who's our compare in the keynote, yeah. uh, it's going to be really compli- complicated. We've oh. got to go right. Which Matt are we talking about? Which, which compare Matt are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so Matt in the uh, in the key- keynote kept uh, kept saying, "Yeah, Aaron's um, <laughs> Aaron's epileptic carpet." I'm like, "Well, I'm like, I don't know if we could say that, but I was wearing a shirt mm. to try and counteract it, so I don't know if we can <laughs> say that." So I apologise. It was just a bit like, "Well," but yeah, the thing about it is, is that classroom <laughs> is designed for for those companies, them them schools, to kind of just actually show education uh, professionals and parents and young people that this is what we do, this is why we do it, and this is how we can support you. And that's the whole point of it. That was the whole point of the uh, the classroom. And then we had something last year called the demo zone, which we've called mm. the workshop zone. And that was feedback from the sponsor. So from Moon Hall School, they sponsor the workshop. And we now we've got round tables, we've got more tables. It's more of an actual hands-on concept. And that's what we wanted to do. And we've got some amazing talks in there again. But the thing what it is, is that they're all free concepts. So what you have is, the reason we've done that is, is because... There's only X number of seats in seminar theatres. Yes, yes. Right? And it, people don't really... Seats cost me money. I have to pay for that seat to hire that seat. Yes. <laughs> I have to build that space. I have to build the AVT. It all... There's a, there's a fine line between what you can do and why you have to do it. And that's why things do cost money. But mm. the point of it is, is that we then actually de- we can then deliver an amazing opportunity and an amazing experience for someone and we can do them extra areas. And that's why I got it. And of course we have the keynote, which we had last time. Mm. Uh, I'm going to have to say it though, Matt, I do apologize, but we have got another podcast sponsoring that one. <laughs> so we have got the invisible gift. Invisible sponsoring gift. That. <laughs> yes. But it is that you are uh, to me, Multiple podcasts are very good, I think, because you've all got a different spin on things, uh, and Andrew has as well. And I, and I was on Andrew's Andrew, I was on Andrew's podcast last week, so mm. I'm doing the rounds as as, you, as the uh, as as uh, was the actors would say when they they're on their press tour. I'm on my press tour. It's like you are a, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you know. um, 
And then I have to remember, have I said that before? Did I say that like 20 minutes ago? Or did I say that like two weeks ago to another podcast? That's the question. <laughs> but um, but no, the point is that we, we uh, yeah, we have the keynote and we've got some amazing talks going on there, some amazing panel talks. And that thing is that that's more of a panel conversation about from inspiring dyslexics to listen to them of how, what they feel about certain things. Uh, and it's it's a, it's a lot of a, di- it's a different atmosphere concept it is. And that's mm. the whole point. Uh, and the show opens there, so people will walk up there to when the show opens and stuff like that. So it's not, where well, last year it was in the centre, it's now at the back, so it's a little bit, uh, so, people, so people have to walk through the show. Yeah, and that, good, good thing. And, that, uh, and yes. that's since you've got to walk past everyone before you can get to the set to get to it. Uh, and it's actually, it's on the way to the toilet, which is always useful. <laughs> and and also catering is in near the front of the hall rather than so we, we rather than at the back or rather than the side so it's closer in so it's complete so when you come on matt you, it's completely different you're yeah. actually quite lucky uh, uh, now and of course subject to change just to point that out but where, <laughs> I, where because i because I, I like anything like this could change if we have to change stuff, because it could change tomorrow, because things could happen that would be brilliant, yeah. or could be, or we need to move stuff around. Uh, you're actually you, uh, catering is in fr- is behind you, so where you where you'll be presenting from, catering is you know, dyslexic box. Then you've got catering, so you've got Ugh. you're not far away from coffee, so that's always good. <laughs> I'm gonna be wired and stuffed full by, by the end of the day. <laughs> that's the thing. Well, 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 but also you're just going to the speaker's lounge anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that would be cool. Yeah. Everybody walking past coffee and jitters and <laughs> sitting down. That would be great. Where did all these ideas come from? Like, I feel like you have a washout session and then you just bullet point them down. You mentioned putting one into your phone the day after, the morning after the show. But where did all the other stuff, what was the seed for like the innovation? The, the thing what is the whole seed for the whole show comes back from my life as a as a dyslex is working through dyslexia. Mm-hmm. We have we've got five uh, four amazing. Well, the UK has five amazing charities. Yes, that work in dyslexia. From the B- British Dyslexia Association, Helen Arkell, Patos, Succeed with Dyslexia, are made by dyslexia. Mm-hmm. After them five, we've got four of them on the show. On top of that, <laughs> we we then also have Nason, which is an amazing charity supporting teachers and education around around special needs. So you've got mm. so we've got five charities, five CEOs on the stage. Now, all five of them or all six of them do some amazing work and they have their own niches of what they do. Now, yes, I'm I'm going to be biased in the one sense. I am vice chair of the British Dyslexia mm. Association. I used to work for them. So I know what they do a lot, but I'm also very good at kind of sitting in that in that outer space and going, you know what, I believe in dyslexia, I believe in what you're all doing, and you are all doing something to support someone. Mm-hmm. We then also then have all these companies because unfortunately, and it's and it's unfortunate, but it's also fortunately, that dyslexia is not it's not on the NHS, it's not it's not a medical condition, it is an education uh, um, difference or difficulty or strength. So we have to find ways to support it. And we actually have people that are dyslexia become innovative and find solutions to support them. And we have products and services from a from a from a book to a card game to a to a to a math resource to a to a reading ruler to a um, to a piece of technology to a, a text to speech to to a to a dictation tool to uh, I'm just trying to think giving things out there to uh, another to another book to mm. basically that kind of concept all over it and that's the thing is that that that's what we have to do so having that. And having them charities and going, okay, how do you pull this together? So actually you are supporting all areas because actually that event that that charity does only supports education. Oh, and, that, and then that event only supports parents. And actually that kind of service only supports individuals, but not as good as it could do. And and actually who's supporting workplace apart from that one course they're running or that one activity. And actually, so if I then go, well, you know what, actually I know the industry very well. I, I'm very I not try not to be big headed, but I've been in it a long time. Yeah. So let's bring it all together. And that's the thing is that you take the feedback. It was all originally the show was going to be for education and parents. That's what it was going mm. to be for. And that was my biggest thing. Disle- workplace came on because of dyslexia box and their and their feeling about it, which was brilliant. And I think, you know what, actually that's the best thing that ever happened. Uh, individual came on because of the feedback. Yes. And yes. and and this is the thing, and it's like and and you're always getting feedback. It's like like I I I follow 
the our we, we have adverts on Facebook and we have things going on, and you follow the, the the trends, and we are listening to them trends. We are listening to that conversation, and that will interact my decision for 2025, 2026. Mm. Because I, 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 it's how you grow it. How you grow it. If you want to do so, you want something. Let's try and make it happen. It's like we've had many people that would like me to like go to every county in the every county in the in in the country, but yeah. I can't do that. That I can't <laughs> do. I, I I did have a plan once about a dyslexia show on the move, but I, I I don't think my exhibitors. I don't know how the exhibitors will feel about that one because, but hey, it's an idea in the future. But that's the thing. So it it kind of it literally sits in my brain and I go, oh, let's do this. And and I go, well, what about, what, like, like the, the classroom is a prime example. The classroom was an idea I had in, 20, in 2019. Mm-hmm. I also had it in 2021 when we were in the pandemic. And I also had it in 2022. And, I, and it never happened. Mainly because it was a hard thing to try and get right to fund it. It's because the thing with a feature, yeah, this is the thing, the feature has no income because we don't get it from like a seminar room has a bit of income from the speak from the the delegates, mm. but it has no income. So you've got to sponsor it in a way. So you've got to kind of then go, okay, you've got all your exhibitors, and that's how you have to do it. So you've got to find a way to do that, and that's the first side of it. Now we've done that with with the classroom this year. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but then again, having amazing people on your team and they go well actually why doesn't it be this and actually you go right that's it you've got it right that's what it is and the yeah. classroom changed the classroom was one thing the classroom is now a completely other thing from what it was so in in 12 months since i came up with that idea that has changed and it changed it changed within the first three months um but it, but that's how things develop and that's how we, that's that's how i pull it together right? it's kind of like i look at things i listen to people i read things or mm. i'm sorry I listen to things because things get read back to me. And I go, <laughs> right. Uh, um, I, I then go, okay, let's do this. And and that's the importance of how you develop stuff. And if you don't listen to your audience and you don't listen to your exhibitors, you're not going to have a successful show. No, no, definitely. It's a sort of iterative process, isn't it? And you've done yeah. the first iteration, now on iteration two. Is there anything that's not at this year's show that was at last year's that you felt didn't work? So we've renamed the, the the demo zone to a workshop zone. Mm. So that is that was a big change because the demo zone didn't work how I wanted it to work. It worked okay, but it wasn't as good as I wanted to. Where the workshop is a different concept, and we've also changed the other thing where we had a parents activity outside the hall, yeah, uh, where parents could go into the into a room and listen to speakers. Um, that were dedicated for parents and young people, we've moved that into the workshop. So that is actually on the show floor. So that uh, kind of yes. contains it. So we still have the room outside. So we're, we're amazing. The, the amazing thing is that all of our, all of our partners, so our, the four charities, five charities, they all have a session in the concourse suite that you can attend. It's an education CPD session, the same as every, on, it's on the fr- only on the Friday. Uh, right, so they're available then. So they are, that's an amazing additional bit of content for us on top of our timetable we've created. So it does help. It does. Yeah. It's going to be super busy because that timetable is going to be pretty the, the random. Thing, the thing what it is, what you have this is basically is my feeling is that if you what if you you've got four or five different people that's going to attend the show. Yeah. You're going to have one person going to attend the show that just wants to look around. You have one person that is like I have no, you're going to have a parent that goes, I don't know where to start. And they're going to go, you know what? I want to listen to that person because that's a topic that I want to be interested in. And they'll look at the program on, around the 24th of February when the when the digital program comes out. And they're actually, mm. no, I really want to listen to that person because that sits my criteria. The same with workplace. They're going to go, you know what? Actually, I don't need to do this one, but I want to do this one. I want to go and listen to that. And this is the concept that we have that will happen all the while. And that's the benefit of the show. Yes, there's a hell of a lot of content going on at the show. Mm. There is going to be, at any one time, eight sessions, nine sessions. So nine opportunities to listen to something at any one time. You're going to be spoiled for choice. When, you when are spoiled for choice. Yeah. But the problem is, is also to get as much stuff in there that people want. Yeah. Yes. And that's the whole point of it. Is. And that's the whole thing. So yeah, so it, yeah, no, it's going to be 
it's been good. We we've done one other thing we've done. So the, I'll give you one other thing that I got told. I I got told and I got and it got commented a number of times. And it's an internal thing. I didn't give our AV team uh, a lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, my AV manager, who I love, I love to bits. This amazing guy, uh, right, who, who the, the the managing director of of, H2, of, of um, digital age events, uh, and and basically, his his job is to float. His job is to deal with issues. Mm. Uh, um, but when he said to me, "I've had to now do seven talks," or "I've had to do five, no, he had to do five talks," because he had to send people off to have their lunch breaks. <laughs> And he had to sit there in a room. He wasn't best impressed with me. Uh, so I, I made sure that, like, I said to him, look, uh, you have got a 45 minute lunch break. You'll need one person not to have a lunch break at that time. Yeah. So logic, that won't be you. And it's fine. So he was like, yeah, that works. And this is the thing you learn. You learn these things, and that's it. And and the doubt that that also come out because we actually had the, we had the problem last year because of COVID. So we yeah. weren't allowed to have the sessions. All the sessions were at the same time because that was some of the rules that came that the venue still had because of COVID. That oh, we weren't allowed to have everyone coming in and out of building rooms at the same time. Mm-hmm. And they also had to be a certain amount of time for cleaning, and we had to like clean microphones and stuff. So there's still an element of COVID that we had to deal with, which actually, we it's not called COVID in the risk assessment. It's called uh, um, community of diseases, <clears throat> which has to be, yeah, I think that's what it's called. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have. I have an operations manager that deals with things like this. I have a person for that. <laughs> I have a person for that. I have an ama- Actually, no. I have an amazing person for that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, somebody, she's like, like, like. Yeah. There is. There, there is. There is. There is. There is a number of people. There's loads of people on the show, but but without without Tammy and Andy. Uh, Tammy's our ops manager. Andy's our sales manager, our, and they work very close together. They 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 are they are husband and wife, so of course they work close together. But, <laughs> and and that's Tamara and Event Services, which I cannot. The show wouldn't happen without them. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. You've got then, of course, you've got Paula, who's my support worker, who keeps yeah. me in check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who manages everything for me, um, and also takes on that responsibility of managing that continuing professional development timetable. So she actually pulls that together very. And has to deal with all every all the speakers and deals with hotels and stuff like that, and catering. You've got Matt and Sean who deal with marketing, right? And then of course you've got Ben at Dyslexia Box, and of course my wife Lucy who just has to deal with me when I'm like <laughs> having a med- mega meltdown or like or literally I'm still in the office at nine o'clock and she says, "Are you coming in the house to eat today?" Uh, or has to shout at the Alexa to say, uh, "Dinner's ready," and that kind of thing. Ah, uh, yes, of course, and I imagine she. Has to kind of—I don't know how you feel with running a business in a big show like this—but the highs and lows of it were some days. Oh, 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 oh awesome! Oh. And other days it feels like you've been yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing a podcast today, and I'm on, yeah. I'm on a high because I'm I've had a good day. Yesterday was a horrible day for me as 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 someone with 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 an, with neurodiversity. I I I know I have tendencies of ADHD and ASD, mm-hmm. and, and and I and they are sometimes really challenging. They are. But it was actually it was actually really interesting. We we have Natalie, and I can't remember Natalie's last name. Uh, uh, who's, that's it from that's it is Natalie Brooks. Thank you, I can't yeah. remember her last name. So Natalie Brooks from from uh, Adult in Dyslexia, mm. who came and spoke uh, at the show last year, and yeah. uh, and she's speaking again this year at the show because yeah. and we've we've put her on our own stage. That's the thing she's speaking in the individual stage, uh, in the individual uh, timetable. Um, which is a really an amazing concept because she's an interesting, a really inspiring speaker for individuals of what she's done and how she's doing stuff, and how she can support adults. But she she did a lot of pod, a lot of TikToks about masking after the show, mm-hmm. and I was absolutely gobsmacked about actually how much I mask my disability or my differences. Now I'm very much open that I call dyslexia a disability because it, it under the Equality Act it's a disability. And yeah. that's how I can get, how I can get my support, and I can actually live in this world and feed into society. Mm. But, you know, my, my wife is the person that sees everything. Yes, and and, and we we prior the thing that we're not going to talk about is 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 something personal to me and Lucy. But yeah, yeah, sure. we have had uh, we have not had the best twelve months of our lives at all. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, and and that to me is that feeds into it, and it feeds into a lot of things about the show because I had to take the whole of December off because of a personal issue. Now, if you follow me on yeah. social media, you can find out why, and I'm not going. It's not going to be a thing. 
and it's not for this podcast because we don't want to lower the tone too much <laughs> in this thing. But the point about it is, is that we have to deal with life. Yeah. And when yeah. you are the driving force of a business, that it affects it. Yeah. But, but like, 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 I'm quite happy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying not to be overconfident. We could still <laughs> like. I could get the stand bill tomorrow, and it could be three that it could be three hundred percent more than I think it's going to be. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's twenty percent less than I think it's going to be, uh, <laughs> uh, or even fifty percent less than I want it to be. If Steve yeah. listened to this podcast, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's it. but <laughs> yeah, he'll get it. Like, like, let's see. But this is the thing: it's you work in a community that works together, and you just keep moving forward, and you you yeah. do it for the reason being is, and this is the biggest thing: is what people always, what I have to keep reminding myself, and and not even reminding myself, but it's like. I don't read automatically. Mm-hmm. Right? And there is 6.9 million people in the UK that have some severity of dyslexia. So, we, and we still have a 50% of our prison population have a literacy difficult, difficulty. We have an education system, be honest, that doesn't support dyslexic people properly. It has its it has its brilliant things. It has its amazing teachers, but it is not designed to support some of the neurodiversity from an exam. Like, like if we put it in context, how many of us in our working lives all come together on one day and do an exam that we've learned that we've trained for for the last twelve months? And I'm not just saying like one company. It's like hundreds of companies or thousands of companies doing that. It's not heard of. Mm. And that to me is kind of a thing. L- Lorraine Peterson, who unfortunately can't be at the show this year, she was at the show last year, um, has a saying. We have a 21st century intake to a so we have a 21st century intake to a 19th century education system. And and this is why we do it. We do it because parents need that support. Edu- educators want to support their children. Individuals that have been failed by the system need to understand how they can support themselves. And the yes. workplace needs to follow the law. And and that's and that is the simple yes. fact. That it, that's right. And actually, but also, we we can we can we we can talk about you, Matt, and your talent that you've now you've told me about earlier of what you've changed in your in your own personal working life. That is because the workplace is changing. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like 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 it's not right. It some things are not right, and some things are right. And that thing is that actually someone with neurodiversity has a talent. They have an expertise, and they can use that strength. and And that's one thing we have. Dr. Helen Taylor, who's mm-hmm. speaking at the show, and her research around the the strengths of of dyslexia and about and about the ecologicalness of dyslexia and that 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 evolution of dyslexia of life actually is so interesting and so true. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and dyslexia is one of them. Yeah. Dyslexia yeah. can be a strength. That's the thing, and that it allow it allows me to do what I do. And that's why we have a show for it, because actually, we need to praise them people. We need to show them individuals that they're not alone. We show them young people they're not alone. Like we know, there's there's over over 150 young people coming on the on the Saturday, which is brilliant. That's a lot more than last year, yeah. and actually, and I'm very happy to have them there because I want to support them. I want them to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. that's the thing. Yeah, and that's the thing. So, yeah. So in terms of your personal growth as the show curator between the two shows. How do you feel? What have you grown as as the show curator? I've learned to give people jobs. <laughs> to a point. Yes, yes. That yeah. is, giving up things is hard. Right? Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so I, so I, I'll, I'll prime example. So um, Matt, who is our compare, is also our web designer and our graphic designer. Mm. And I have a lot of time for Matt. Me and Matt work really close together on a number of projects, oh, yeah. and he does and he does the uh, he does he does the website format. And um, Andy, who's our sales manager, um, did a bit of marketing support at the beginning with the website stuff. I guess things going. Mm. Now, Andy, I wrote the original website, and Andy rewrote a lot of it. Now, that is very hard for me. Mm. Mm. So, someone rewriting my work, completely rewriting it to a point where it was in proper language. <laughs> is is quite hard now. Changing language and changing words so it sounds right is fine by me. Uh, and I always remember when I worked at the British Dyslexia, I had an amazing support worker, and I don't nothing wrong with 
with Laura, who I worked with. Apart from, we went to this, I went to this meeting and it was for an international conference. Now I was doing exhibition sales and exhibition work and I kind of had a plan of what was going on to try and give them an update. So I got the document out. Now I'd memorized the document. Nice. And so I knew the document off by and I started going through and I went, and of course we've got, and I stopped and went, where's my, where's my, where's my, my red hot leads? Because I kind of put people in red hot and hot leads and cold leads. So I knew what was going on. So people could say, I've actually got this. And it was all written in posh English because she was an, she had an English degree. I loved, love it a bit. She's actually got, <laughs> she's actually my daughter's godmother. Right. So this is the thing. So nothing against her, but that, was the hardest thing because I, I because actually I memorized stuff and this was the thing when we when we we had the conversation about it and I said to Andy I said the problem is what I wrote is what I'm saying so if someone's interviewing me that's what I'm going to say because that's what I remember what you've written is different so it's the prime example like we spoke about earlier about yeah. these things I hadn't find about meet inspire understand connect I did yeah. write something like that but it's been changed a little bit and actually you know what that's better I like that I'm going to yeah, use yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing so you yeah, know it is it's it is a brilliant concept yeah yeah so i think to live letting go is probably the answer to your question yes and trusting people yes i can imagine sure as you say being an entrepreneur it's hard to you've had to drive the vehicle for quite a long time haven't yeah. you, to get it to yeah. a point and, and that's it and this is why I, I will come back to saying that that that, that having tammy and andy and they're going to like, I'm going to die after, I, like, because these are behind the scenes people. They're not in in front of me, but they are people yeah. that that actually you can't do an event behind, before. It's like, it's like things like you have to have a fire risk assessment, which is logical, but it also you have to have a people management assessment, and you have to have a people management plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we have, if if all of you turn up that's registered on the first day, all at the same time. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. That's not not hundreds, it's thousands. Yeah. Right. Right. And and the problem is you've all got to get in the hall. How do we get you all in the hall? How do we deal with that bit? Well, well, what I do is I grab a scanner and I start scanning you all because I'm going to scan you in because I need you, we need to scan everyone in and scan people out to a point. So mm. it's a it's a very kind of interesting concept and that's the thing. So yeah, you do you do have to kind of trust the people around you and go, right, okay doing this for the best and that's why they are and that's the thing you see and that's what we are we are here to do it is yeah. and that's it comes back down to that but now I have that's what I've had to learn yeah definitely so I imagine your team has grown by a few no 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 it hasn't actually, actually has it not? It, no 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 the team has actually huh. stayed near enough the same so yeah so we have taken on one person We've taken on two people now to do little jobs to support the show, mm-hmm. but not they're not they're not full time. Uh, um, like we've taken on a we've taken on a, a, a PR and marketing consultant just to kind of help with that next level stuff. So it's kind of that mm. it's kind of the more more not more about it's not kind of like it's not like the social media stuff. It's more about the overarching stuff, and they are they are an expert in that in that concept. Um, we changed our sales manager because, of course, our, our previous sales manager had to leave. So that yeah. kind of, so that kind of happened. So that was a small change, and no, everyone else is the same. So we haven't really grown in that sense because actually, we, we it's not really the time to grow. Next year might be, mm. and that's the thing because the thing like is the show ha- the show's grown definitely. We've got I think yeah. we're now up to about fifty two exhibitors. Or yeah. or, uh, no, no, fifty five exhibitors. So we, we've what we what you do is you do this thing called consolidation. So you get to a point where you go, you know, what, actually. I think I'm going to do this much more. And that's why we know we're at 95%. We know we've got about 5 to 8% of space left to sell. We can sell more. So I can mm. always sell more. Mm-hmm. But what I can't do is I can't take any more away. Yes. Yeah. And that's the problem. That's the thing. If you take stuff away, yeah. you're paying for stuff that you, you're not, that you haven't sold and that kind of isn't the right thing. So this is where it, it's a balancing act. Uh, this is the kind of business balance. This is the business side. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the business side. But also when having people like like your events operations and health and safety manager and your and your sales manager that have worked in events before and been in events all over the world, it's very beneficial. Yes, most definitely. So normally I end the podcast with three rapid fire questions. However, yes. you've already answered these, so we're not going to do that. But 
I thought I'd have some fun with one of them. Now, go for it. Again, rapid fire question for me. They do not need a rapid fire answer from yourself. So mm, that's good because you won't get one. You know that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask you now is, if an alien landed and you had to describe the dyslexia show to them, how would you do it? It's the UK's national exhibition dedicated to dyslexia and neurodiversity, which is an educational condition that affects the way that you process information like reading writing and spelling <laughs> there you go was that's that, that that's was quite a concise a, answer that's a very concise answer <laughs> the dyslexia show also supports education <laughs> parents in the workplace <laughs> and it takes place the 24th and 25th of march at the nec in birmingham but, but hey ho that's it <laughs> Yeah, I know, that was quite good. The thing is, you say the word concise, like I did the word concise, that's the thing. I know I didn't have to, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, that, cool. Okay, then. And um, before we sign off, I'm going to ask you just to quickly say, why should people come to the show and where can people find you? Okay, so you can find loads of information about the show. The show is part of that community. Just come along if you are on, if you're in any one of them streams, education, parents, workplace, individual, uh, register for free. Of course, workplace you pay ninety nine pound for, but the other three mm. you register for three for free. Just to, it, it's twenty pound for sessions for education and individual. It's ten pound for parents. Um, if you've got a young person with you and they're coming to a seminar, they will be charged five pounds. Uh, as I said earlier, we have to pay for a chair. Um, yeah, that thing. So it's that kind of concept. We're trying to make it as cost effective as possible. The event is all about awareness and 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 getting involved in the field of dyslexia, understanding what is right for you. I used the word informed choice. If you understand what is there, you can inform your choices correctly. You can understand what is right for you. And you have to have understanding. The one thing I always say about my dyslexia, I understand my strengths, I understand my weaknesses, I understand my difficulties. And if you understand that, you can do that. And that's what the show is all about. It's bringing people together, having a community feel, and basically finding a resource, finding, uh, listening to a speaker, getting inspired, and kind of doing this concept that I love, like meet, be inspired, understand, and connect, <laughs> uh, and actually grow as an individual. So, yeah, you can find out more about it, dyslexiashow.co.uk. It takes place on the 24th, 25th of March at the NEC in Birmingham. Uh, it opens at 9.30 on the 24th, closes at 5, and opens at 9.30 on the 25th, and closes at 4. Uh, it's both in Hall 8 it's on the what they call the atrium side of the NEC mm. um, you do have to pay if you're coming by car you have to pay for parking yeah. book it before the show you book it 24 hours before the show and it's cheaper if you book it on the day it gets more expensive yeah. um, and there is a web page on our visitor page you can find more about that uh, and uh, and yeah come along sign up come and find that per that hectic person he said i heard you on a podcast and i'll go which one <laughs> which one because <laughs> uh, i've done a few and then, uh, and then and then you'll say and then you'll go ah uh, i'll go well you know that person who was interviewing me he's standing over there you know the really tall one that's yeah that's, on, that's, uh, that's also on a stage as well because you know <laughs> i don't know then if ben's told you that i've gave you a platform oh, as well God. A platform. So this could be fun yeah that's fine <laughs> d- d- right. i'm gonna digress now how tall are you matt so I'm 6'2", or 1.9 metres tall, depending on what your currency is. <laughs> okay, so so 1.9, 1.9 metres, 1.8, 1.9 metres. So the wall is 2.4 metres. The platform is another 30 centimetres off the wall. So you are going to be quite tall. You're not going <laughs> to be above the wall. And that's the thing. So yeah, so I, I'm sorry. I, I give you a platform as well. Oh, that's okay. As long as you've made the wall the right height behind me. Yeah, well, the, well, the yeah, that's fine. Two, well, fine. Well, every wall is 2.4. <laughs> you see, this is, look, look, this is the other concept. Walls can't go above 2.4 meters because then you have to get a structural engineer in. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Temporary build, you see. You're building stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, of course. Build, yeah. build, building site. Like, like, I have to wear steel toe caps. Yeah. When I, I, I'm on build. Hi, Miss. You almost sound excited about that. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, well, I, well, they actually are really comfortable because they're only one. <laughs> That's it. They were brand new and they were really comfortable. And I get to wear a, a really cool pink high vis because, of course, we, we, we've gone for the pinky purple color because that's mm. I don't know, well because that's what I picked. And my high vis is that color. <laughs> it's, it's all color coded. Nice, yeah, it's all color coded. I think it's color coded. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's got, got to be color coded. <laughs> Guy, and did you ask me how to find out about me? Is that the other thing? Is that what you said to me? I can't remember now. We've had a long conversation about height. We haven't, I haven't, but um, that was going to be a thing. So, you know, you, you've added the detail of this actually show. So, 
Yeah, great for the detailed dyslexia. So where can people find you? Because you're quite active on social media. Yeah, you can, find, so you can find me on LinkedIn as Aaron Smith, so A-R-R-A-N Smith. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Aaron Dyslexia. Also on Facebook at Aaron Dyslexia as well. So I have a Facebook uh, page, Aaron Dyslexia, uh, uh, who I've started this year. Uh, mm-hmm. I've started this thing called uh, Thought of the... And I just put a, a dot because it's not a thought of the day because I can't do it daily. Mm. And it's just a thought happens. And I share a random picture. It's not a, it's a stock picture because that's how I work um, <laughs> of a thought relating to something that's going on in life as a person with neurodiversity. So that's something that I started doing new. Um, oh, cool. And yeah, but no, no, if you're, if you're coming to the dyslexia show, um, just wave at me and go, hi, Aaron. Uh, and that I'm happy to have that. I'm happy to talk to people. You, you won't be able to yeah. miss Aaron. He'll be the one in the very lively patterned shirt. <laughs> yes, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I had to find a way to counteract the carpet, didn't I? Yeah, you did, yeah. You, you certainly succeeded in that, and I heard you gave your cameraman a bit of a hard time with trying to get the camera to work with it. <laughs> I, I, I gave a lot of people a hard time with it, that's thing. So, uh, no. But no, that's the thing. It's 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 an event to thing. And like I said, I'm yeah. just the thing. You can also find um, all, all the... So it's Dyslexia Show UK on Twitter, Dyslexia Show Live on Facebook. Yes. It's the social channels for Dyslexia Show, uh, but they are on the website. So dyslexiashow.co.uk. Uh, and you can register for free or £99 per workplace. And I'd love to, we'd always want to see people there. So more the merrier. Uh, don't miss out. And I'll just put this one last plug in because you can, you can then use it. Um, <laughs> don't miss out on uh, your seminars. Get your seminars booked within the next couple of weeks. Mm. So if that's thing, so I said we're six weeks out now. I, I would I would expect that Matt's going to probably get this out probably in the next four weeks from the show, give yeah. or take. Yeah. yeah. So you've got four weeks. Um, in the third week before the show, them seminars rocket, and I mean rocket. So get in earlier so you get what you want to go to because you don't want to miss out. Because unfortunately, we don't have the space to run them again. Uh, mm. They are. There is uh, there is limited seats availability in every room, so get it. Book in what you want to go to, and then uh, uh, and then we'll see you. We'll we'll see you there, and we'll see what we do. You'll you'll hear the dates for next year. Yeah, and I'm going to mention one more thing, Matt, so you can put this <laughs> in. So because I think this is really, really important. The dyslexia show can't run without a number of people. So our exhibitors and our staff, mm-hmm. but of course, actually our sponsors. Yeah. And I am going to announce a sponsor on your show because you're going to be because of when it was. So I'm delighted that again, uh, so we've got Dyslexia Box as our workplace sponsor, Textelp as our lead sponsor. I'm delighted that Microsoft are, spo- are a lead sponsor again. So Microsoft will be at the show. Uh, we have Breeding School as our silver sponsor. Uh, Scanning Pens is our CPD sponsor. Nessie as our Nessie Learning as our bag sponsor. Send Legal is our legal uh, legal surgery sponsor. Moon Hall is our workshop sponsor. Invisible Gift are as our as our keynote sponsor. Dyslexia Box is Innovation Theatre. We also then have uh, Orcam, Send Books, Recite Me, uh, Special Direct TTS, Send Group, uh, and. Um, and LGFL of all show supporters. And we have an amazing array of partners from the British Dyslexia Association, Helen Arkell Dyslexia Charity, Patos, uh, Succeed with Dyslexia, Schools mm. Mailing, um, Sensible Senko, Head Teach Chat, Sencast, uh, and, and, uh, and Crested as our show partners. That's a fair size list <laughs> well the thing to tell you the truth Matt I've had to cough, I've had to read off the website yeah and yeah. two of them aren't on there and I had to remember them which I'm very <laughs> impressed that I did <laughs> okay well that leaves me with just one thing to say which is to thank you for taking the time to come on and talk to me not a evening. problem and I want to thank everybody else for taking the time to listen and I will talk to you in the next episode goodbye for now